Russia recently began to accuse Ukraine of preparing to use a dirty bomb and provocation against Russia. Let's take a quick look at what's wrong with these accusations. Over the weekend, Russia's main state media, RIA Novosti, released an article claiming that, according to intelligence, Ukraine is in the final stages of creating a dirty bomb or a low-yield nuclear weapon. Later, the head of the Radiation, Biological, and Chemical Defense Forces, Lt. Gen. Igor Kirilov, announced similar information at a briefing. He said that allegedly a provocation is being prepared, as a result of which Ukraine wants to accuse Russia of trying to use a uranium nuclear bomb, which did not work and only led to radioactive contamination. And as a result, the radioactive release will be so serious that its traces will be recorded in Europe. On Sunday, October 23rd, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu called for NATO defense ministers and told them about these supposedly existing Ukraine plans. True, later they issued a response stating that they did not believe a single word of Shoigu. Nevertheless, on Tuesday Russia requested to convene the UN Security Council to consider this issue. So she continues to insist on her version. But what is wrong with these statements? First, let's understand what a dirty bomb is. Do not confuse it with nuclear weapons. And even with low-yield nuclear weapons. A dirty bomb is simply a radiological weapon that results in the dispersal of some kind of radioactive substance and contamination of the area. Moreover, it is important to understand that such a weapon has never been used, is not in service with any country in the world, and is considered only a theoretical version of the weapon of terrorists who were able to find some kind of radioactive substance, but are not able to create a nuclear bomb. Such a dirty bomb can only scare, because everyone is afraid of radiation. Just a rumor about the explosion of such a bomb can cause panic. There is no real practical and military meaning in such weapons. If it is cheap and simple, then it will not be able to cause serious damage. And in order for it to actually kill people in some territory, and even more so cause damage thousands of kilometers away, it must be something incredibly complex, large, and expensive. There must be either a dangerous and expensive radionuclide, such as plutonium, or a very lot of relatively cheap cesium-137. The psychological impact of a dirty bomb can be much higher, its purpose is to scare. Therefore, it is a weapon of terrorists. The second important point is that it cannot be used for provocation and passed off as the use of a nuclear bomb. Because the composition of the isotopes in the release of a nuclear bomb and a dirty bomb made from radioactive waste will be different. And even passing off this bomb as an unexploded uranium bomb will not work. First, an unexploded uranium bomb will not lead to the pollution of Europe, which is feared. Second, a uranium bomb requires highly enriched uranium. And it simply does not exist in Ukraine. The Russian Defense Ministry and propaganda hint that the Eastern Mining and Processing Plant, located in the city of Zavtivadi, and the Kiev Institute for Nuclear Research are working on a dirty bomb. But the first is only engaged in the extraction of natural uranium, and there are no uranium enrichment factories in Ukraine to make a bomb out of it. The research reactor VVRM operates at the Kiev Institute. But although it is used as fuel uranium with a higher enrichment than at nuclear power plants, up to 30%, and in recent years up to 20%, this is still much less than the 90% enrichment of weapons-grade uranium. So it will be impossible to pass off such a dirty bomb as an unexploded or even exploded nuclear bomb. Specialists can easily identify what was the source of radiation. In addition, the IAEA on the evening of October 24 issued a statement that both of these Ukrainian enterprises are under its safeguards and regular inspections, and there is no activity aimed at the military use of nuclear materials. The main work of the IAEA lies precisely in this, to check peaceful nuclear facilities so that everything there is used only for peaceful purposes. Russia is going to challenge the opinion of the IAEA? Well, they are already trying to convince the world that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant now belongs to Russia. Unsuccessfully. Nobody admits it. The presence in Ukraine of nuclear power plants, research reactors, nuclear specialists, and scientific organizations does not yet mean that it is working on a nuclear weapon or a dirty bomb. It's like blaming anyone with a knife for wanting to stab you. Without evidence, it's just paranoia. And there is no evidence. At the beginning of the war, Russia held the Chernobyl nuclear power plant for a whole month. And now it has been holding the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in occupation for almost eight months. And during this time has not provided any evidence of work on nuclear weapons or dirty bombs at these largest nuclear facilities in Ukraine. So this propaganda story of Russia is quickly and easily revealed and refuted. The funny thing here is that in the infographic of propagandists from RA Novosti, where they show different nuclear facilities in Ukraine, where work on the bomb can be carried out, a photograph of the Russian BN-600 fast sodium reactor at the Beloyersk nuclear power plant is shown. I have been to this reactor several times, so I can easily recognize it. But propaganda does not care how quickly and carelessly it does its job. Because tomorrow they will have to compose something new, 
and the public inside Russia will forget this material. Do not forget that Russia has repeatedly spoken about various provocations and threats from Ukraine, which ended in nothing. There were also stories about terrible biological laboratories in Ukraine, where they are working on biological weapons against Russia. There were stories of impending provocations with chemical weapons in the Odessa and Donetsk regions, and so on. But none of this happened. All this does not mean that Russia itself will not be able to arrange some kind of attack under a false flag or make some kind of provocation. But so far we see that Russia's cunning moves and multi-way planning in this war are not very successful, and its fakes are quickly exposed. Nevertheless, let's hope that no more stupid things in the nuclear field than the seizure of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant will happen in this war. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. And take care of yourself.